What's up guys, I'm Let's Fly RC, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up the most basic settings on your flight controller to get your drone up in the air. I see a lot of questions of people who have accidentally flashed their flight controller and erased all of the settings on a pre-built drone, or some people that just don't know how to get started from the very beginning. I'm gonna assume in this video that you already have all of your components soldered up to the flight controller and that you've already flashed Betaflight to your flight controller and that you just need help with the settings in Betaflight to get it up and running. And I'm just gonna go over the very basic features, just enough to get you flying. There's a lot of videos out there that give you entire long walkthroughs of Betaflight and its complexity and the entire Betaflight, but sometimes you don't have time to sit down for seven hours and watch a whole bunch of videos to learn every detail there is to know about Betaflight and you just need to get started. So that's what this video is for. I'm just gonna teach you guys how to quickly get started in Betaflight and get your settings set up. I'm gonna teach you a couple of things about ports and the different components that are used in the flight controller in this tutorial. So this is the setup that I typically use on my five inch and larger drones. This is the T-Motor Pro F7 flight controller. It has all the features I could ever want in a flight controller, it has eight motor outputs and such, so that I can hook this to pretty much all of my projects that I do on the Rotorite YouTube channel. And this is also what I use on my five inch drone. This is the T-Motor F55 ESC the DJI 03 system, and I generally either use Crossfire or ELRS as my receiver. I also, in some cases, use the DJI remote, and we'll talk about that later. This video is going to assume that you already have your receiver soldered to your flight controller, your video system attached to your flight controller, and your ESC attached to your flight controller. And we're just gonna go through the basic beta flight settings on how to get these things all connected to the flight controller and tell the flight controller how to communicate with these devices so that your drone can be ready to go for the first time or get back up in the air if you've accidentally flashed your ESC and erased all of those settings. This video is going to assume that you know how to flash beta flight already and that you've already got beta flight flashed to your flight controller. It's going to assume that you already have beta flight downloaded on your computer. If you need help with those items, I will have separate videos teaching you how to install beta flight on your computer and how to flash beta flight and I'll link those in the description. But for now, we're going to assume that you already have beta flight on your computer and we're going to assume that you already have beta flight flashed to your flight controller. We're going to go ahead and plug the flight controller in and go right into beta flight. Usually the two problems that your flight controller will complain about after flashing firmware to them is that your accelerometer isn't calibrated and you might not have a motor protocol specified. We're gonna silence this error warning by hitting close and we'll tackle those things one at a time. We're gonna start at the very beginning up at the setup tab here. Before we go into any of these other tabs, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're gonna to wanna to go into the setup tab. We're gonna to wanna to set our drone on a flat surface, hold it still and press calibrate accelerometer to calibrate the accelerometer and cancel out the first warning that we saw in Betaflight. And up in the setup tab, we wanna make sure that as we move our flight controller around, the drone moves on screen with it. Pay close attention to the front of the drone and the back of the drone. And if the drone on screen is not mirroring what your drone is doing in front of you, then we need to change a couple of things. And we'll do that in the configuration tab in a moment. But for now, let's just go through the Betaflight tabs on the left-hand side in order from top to bottom. We're gonna jump right into the ports tab. The ports tab is where you assign all of the devices to a specific UART port. But what is a UART? So I usually try to relate a UART port to a USB port on your computer. A USB port on your computer is where you connect and plug in all of your devices, such as your cameras and your mice and your keyboards. The main difference here is that the computer automatically recognizes which device is plugged into which port. A flight controller needs to be told which devices are plugged into which ports or soldered to which pads. So a UART on your flight controller generally corresponds to a serial port input or output, depending on what device you're using and how it's being used. So on your flight controller, a lot of times you'll see TX1, RX2, TX3, RX4, and those correspond to the transmit and receive pins of that UART port. There are a couple devices that are mandatory to be hooked up to your flight controller to make your drone fly. The first is your receiver. On my flight controller, I'm using the Crossfire receiver, and that Crossfire receiver is attached to the TX2 and RX2 pads on the flight controller, which means that my receiver is connected to UART2, and I need to go tell Betaflight in the ports tab that my receiver is connected to UART2. So the way I would do that is I would go into the ports tab, and I would find UART2 and select Serial RX because my receiver is a serial receiver using the Serial UART2 port. And that's the first step in getting your receiver set up so that you can tell the drone which port your receiver is connected to. The next major component that you need to worry about is your video transmitter. At least if you want to see on-screen display information, 
on your video stream. There's a couple of different video systems out there, such as analog and digital video systems. Most digital video systems are going to have a serial port attached to them to send that OSD information through telemetry to the OSD display. In this particular case, we're using a DJI-03 system in this build, and this DJI-03 system is connected through this cable to the flight controller. On this particular flight controller, my pads are labeled on the flight controller circuit board. If your flight controller doesn't have the pads labeled, you'll need to refer to the documentation provided with your flight controller to figure out which pad is connected to which UART port. But mine is labeled clearly right here, R1 and T1, on my plug, and I know that this video transmitter is connected to UART number one. So we're gonna go back into Betaflight, and we're going to set UART one to MSP, which is going to allow the video transmitter to send data through MSP to the on-screen display. There's a lot of other peripherals that your drone may have connected to it, such as a GPS, and you'll need to make sure that you have those UARTs selected as well in this menu. I'll probably make additional videos in the future on GPS and other types of peripherals, but for this tutorial, I just wanna quickly get you up and flying in the air. The only real major requirement to get your drone flying as a peripheral would be the receiver. So now that we have our receiver and our video transmitter selected and set up to the correct UART port, we're going to press save and reboot. And when Betaflight comes back up, we're going to go back into the ports tab and verify that those two items stayed checked. A lot of times if you accidentally hook something to the wrong port, Betaflight will recognize that and it will clear everything out. So be sure that your tabs are still selected in the ports tab before moving forward. The next tab we're gonna focus on is the configuration tab. In the configuration tab, the first thing that you're going to want to do is set the maximum arm angle to 180 degrees. And this will allow your drone to arm at any angle, even if it's upside down. We're gonna go ahead and hit save and reboot. As I said before, if your drone is not moving in the same direction as the drone on screen, then you will need to go back into the configuration tab and make a few changes to make sure that your drone is facing the correct direction. In my particular situation, my flight controller is moving exactly backwards on the pitch axis. To fix this, I'm going to go into the board and sensor alignment and I'm going to set the yaw degrees to 180 degrees and that will set my flight controller in the correct orientation. Depending on which axis is incorrect on your flight controller, you may have to change the roll degrees or pitch degrees to get your flight controller moving in the correct orientation. This might take a little bit of experimenting. After making a change, we're gonna go ahead and press save and reboot to apply the changes, and then we're gonna go back into the setup tab, and we're going to verify that our drone is moving in the correct orientation. Once you have your drone moving in the correct orientation on screen, then you can move on to the next step. The next tab that we're gonna focus on is the receiver tab. And in the receiver tab, we have to make sure that the correct protocol for our receiver is selected. In this particular case, I'm using a Crossfire receiver, so the protocol that I'm going to select is Crossfire. If your receiver is a Crossfire or ELRS receiver, you can almost be certain that it should be set to the Crossfire protocol. There are some situations where your ELRS or Crossfire receiver could have been programmed by somebody to an SBUS configuration, and in that case, you would select SBUS from this menu, but in most cases, your Crossfire or ELRS receiver should be set up as Crossfire. You may have to do a little bit of research to figure out which protocol your particular receiver is using in order to set up this feature. If you have it properly set up, then the indicators and the drone should move on display when you move your sticks and you have a battery connected to your drone. Be sure if you are gonna connect a battery to your drone and connect it to Betaflight that you have props removed prior to doing so, so that you don't injure yourself. If you're not sure which protocol, you can simply go through and select one at a time until it actually works on screen. You're not gonna hurt anything by selecting the wrong protocol. It just won't work. Speaking of receivers, sometimes you won't even have a receiver attached to your drone because the receiver may be built into your video transmitter, such as this DJI system, which works with the DJI remote. If you're using a DJI remote, then you will wanna go into Betaflight and you will want to set the receiver to the SBUS protocol because the DJI video transmitter and receiver use the SBUS protocol to communicate. In this particular flight controller, this DJI transmitter is hooked to the R2 port, which is the UART2 on this flight controller. I would want to set the UART2 to serial in Betaflight, just as we did with the Crossfire setup. And in this particular case, I would go to Betaflight in the receiver tab and set the protocol to SBUS. Once you have your receiver working on screen, be sure to press save and reboot one more time. After getting the receiver set up, we're gonna to have to go into the modes tab and assign a switch for ARM at the very least. This is easiest to do if you have your drone powered up and connected to the receiver. 
and your receiver working. After you have your radio set up in the receiver tab and you notice that these bars are moving and the drone is properly moving, be sure that you have switches assigned to aux 1 through 4 if needed. At the very least you need to have a switch set up for aux 1. We're going to use aux 1 for our arming switch in the next tab. To verify that your switches are working and assigned to an aux port, you can flip them with the drone connected and powered up and you should be able to see these sliders moving around when you're flipping switches. Make a note as to which switch is attached to which aux port in this tab because we'll need to know that for the next tab. After you've got your receiver set up, we're gonna go into the modes tab, and we're going to assign switches. The only switch that you absolutely need to have working to get your drone flying is the arm switch. So I'm gonna focus on that particular switch in this tutorial. The easiest way to get your arm switch set up is to press add range and flip the switch. If everything is set up properly, your switch should automatically switch to whichever auxiliary port it's attached to if this is set to auto. For example, it should switch to aux 1 if you set your switch to aux 1 in the receiver. And once you have that set up, pick a direction that you want your switch to be in when it's armed, and this yellow tick mark should be either fully to the left or fully to the right, indicating the armed state. If this yellow tick mark is on the left side, you're going to want to click and drag this slider over to the left, and that will be in the armed state when your switch is in this particular position. And if you disarm, this tick mark should move to the other side, and that would indicate disarmed. If this tick mark went over here when you armed your switch, then you're gonna to wanna to drag this slider over to the right. After you have it all set up properly, click Save, and then we'll move on to the next step. There's a lot of other features you can set in this menu, such as angle mode, beeper, and turtle mode, and I'll probably have a separate video to describe how to set those features up in the future. But for now, the arm switch is the only thing we need to have configured to make your drone get off the ground and fly. So moving on to the next tab, we're going to go down to the motors tab now, and we're going to make sure that we have a motor protocol selected for our drone, and we're going to make sure that the props are spinning in the proper direction. So depending on how you have your props oriented on your drone, you're going to need to either select motor direction is reversed, or leave it to the standard configuration. If you're not sure which direction your props are facing, I'll have a video linked in the description that describes how to install props and how to figure out which direction they face. Once you're sure your motor direction is in the correct orientation, we need to select a motor protocol. Now most ESCs these days are going to be a type of D-Shot, either D-Shot 150, D-Shot 300, or D-Shot 600, and that's gonna be what you're going to want to select in most cases. If you have a really old drone, you might be on multi-shot or one-shot 125, or even PWM if your drone is really old. Or if you're running a very small drone, such as a Tiny Whoop, you might even have brushed motors, and in that case you would select brushed as the ESC motor protocol. In this particular situation, I'm going to assume you have a fairly new drone, and we're running a D-Shot protocol. An easy way to be sure that your flight controller is going to be able to keep up with all the data that's needed to be used for this, I generally select D-Shot 300, because I usually can't even tell the difference between D-Shot 300 and D-Shot 600. So to be sure that my flight controller can keep up, I'm going to suggest you start off with D-Shot 300, just to make sure your drone can get off the ground and fly. If you are using really advanced BL Heli 32 ESCs, You'll also want to select bi-directional D-Shot so that your ESCs can take advantage of the most advanced firmware that's available today. Once your motors tab is set up in the proper configuration, go ahead and press save and reboot and come back into that tab once Betaflight reboots and we can test our motors to make sure they're working with the reorder motors or the motors direction buttons. So if you click the motor direction button and you want to verify that your motors are actually working properly, you can click I understand the risks. Be sure that your propellers are removed during this step. I usually go into the individually tab and I can spin the motors one at a time by clicking one through four just to make sure that my motor protocol is selected correctly. If your motors are not spinning and you have a battery plugged in during this step, then you might have the incorrect protocol selected over in this tab. Once you're sure that your motors are spinning and everything is working, we need to make sure that our motors are set up in the proper orientation by going to the reorder motors button. Click I understand the risks if you have your battery connected and your props removed, click start, and when you see your motor spinning, select the corresponding motor from the tab, and then when you're finished, select save, and after you've performed this step, your flight controller will know which motor is in which corner. If you go back to the motor direction tab and you select individually, you should be able to see the motors spinning in the proper corner when you click one, two, three, and four here. Once all that is set up correctly, go ahead and click on save and reboot. 
If you have everything set up properly as shown in this video, your drone should be ready for its first flight. If you're still struggling, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. And if you can think of any other tips that I missed in this video, please leave those in the comments as well. Thanks for watching guys. I'm Let's Play RC and we'll see you next time.